Hi, welcome to the first module of lecture eight. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing discrete distributions. This, along with the next lecture on continuous distributions, forms the core of this part of the class, part three of the course, covering probability. Now, as I said a few times in the previous lecture, this is in some senses the most important um, part of the class you're going to have. So if there's one part of the class that you really get down, this should be it. The reason is that distributions and random variables are absolutely central to every aspect of quantitative and formal political science, and social sciences in general for that matter. Um, without understanding probability distributions and random variables, you cannot understand anything in statistics, literally anything. It all relates to probability distributions and random variables. Um, and we'll discuss the connections throughout these next two lectures. Um, so it's absolutely essential. I can't even give examples for when it's used and when it's not used because it's always used. It's just absolutely essential. Um, it's also, for that matter, essential to all of game theory that involves any kind of uncertainty, whether it be uncertainty in action or type or payoff um, or information or anything. Um, uncertain, um, distributions and random variables are absolutely essential to understanding any kind of game theory that involves uncertainty, which is to say pretty much all of modern game theory. For that matter, Distributions and random variables are also central to most other bounded, um, ra boundedly rational theories, um, which you might learn about um, as you move further on. Like satisficing, for instance, might pop up in, in various classes. These kind of theories all tend to centrally use stochastic processes, which employ random variables and distributions also centrally. So all this stuff is incredibly important. Um, all this, for all this stuff, probability distributions and random variables are incredibly important. So this is going to be um, a central theme of this part of the course, and that's why this part of the course is particularly important for understand for going further in the social sciences. Okay. Um, now, I should say this part of the class, and the next part of the class are really one. Sorry, this lecture and the next lecture are really one lecture in a sense. They all cover the exact same material: random variables and distributions. The split between discrete distributions in this chapter and continuous distributions in the next. In the next lecture, both lectures, sorry, um, and chapters for that matter, um, the, the, the split between both of them occurs for two reasons. One, it would be a very, very long lecture slash chapter if they were all together. But two, more importantly, for discrete distributions, you do not need calculus to understand them at all. For continuous distributions, you do. So for those of you who might have skipped ahead to this part of the course um, and skipped calculus completely, this part is self-contained. You can understand all the stuff in this lecture and the previous lecture for that matter without having ever gone through calculus. The next lecture, though, you cannot. You absolutely need calculus to understand continuous distributions and at any reasonable level. And so don't go on to the next lecture until you actually have some calculus. But this lecture, you're fine. Um, and this will give you some sense of what distributions are and random variables are without having to go through calculus first. Okay. So with that sort of prelude, let's get going. Um, I'm going to talk about four concepts um, right now in this, in this um, module. The first is the most important, and that's the notion of a random variable. Random variables are fundamental, in a sense, to our understanding of the world in the social sciences. We generally do not assume that we can predict some behavior of a person or a nation or, or um, a state or an organization, whatever, um, perfectly. We assume that there's always some uncertainty in behavior that we cannot, that we have not modeled properly. We don't have that model. Now whether it be some kind of innate um, uncertainty that we never can resolve, or maybe it's some uncertainty due to some information that we just don't have um, that's open, but regardless of the source of the uncertainty, there is uncertainty. We do not know with precision, with exactness, with certitude, um, exactly what each outcome is going to be given a set of predictors. All we can do is predict the best we can and try to get closer and closer to being accurate in our theories. We try to posit causal mechanisms that take you to take you from independent variables, from um, causes to outcomes, but we don't ever have the complete story of these mechanisms, so we can't ever tell you exactly that A will always cause B. All we can say is that A is likely to cause an, in an increase in A is likely to cause an increase in B. And this is the focus of most of our theorizing and our hypotheses that we then test on given data, on data. Um, to make this stuff work, sort of formalize this, 
we introduced the notion of a random variable. A random variable, which we'll often call some capital letter, like capital Y, is a variable that might take on some set of possible values. Um, so for instance, y might be 0 or 1. Let's say y is, is the variable corresponding to I voted. Well, if y takes on the value of 0, you did not vote. And if y takes on the value of 1, you did vote. So y in that sense is a random variable if both 0 and 1 can occur with some probability. And that's the core to understanding a random variable. Random variables take on different values, each according to some set probability. The probability distribution of corresponding to that random variable tells you the probability that each one of the values of the random variable happen. So we have random variables, which take on different values. And we have distributions that um, tell you the chance of a random variable taking on each particular value. For discrete distributions, there'll be empirical versions of these. There'll also be um, theoretical versions of these. The theoretical versions are called probability mass distributions. We'll cover them a few modules from now. They tell you the chance of achieving each, va each value in the random variable. They give you the distribution, like it is in English, the distribution of values of the random variable. This is continuous, but the example we used before was the old bell curve, right? the normal distribution. It tells you the relative probability, the relative frequency, that each one of these um, values is going to occur. If this is a standard normal, this would be 0. It tells you 0 is most likely. And then as you go further away from 0 to either side, it becomes less and less likely that you draw a particular value of the random variable distributed in this fashion from the normal distribution. And this is really helpful because the normal distribution has very set um, regions and you can figure out what the chances are of drawing um, a random variable bigger than any particular um, value. And that idea is central to statistics. Right. So there's a random variables and distributions. A distribution again is just some function that describes the probabilities of drawing any particular value of a random variable. We often use, um, now what other, what other values? The values are called realizations of the random variable. We realize a particular value of a random variable when we draw a value and get that one. So for instance, if we have a normal distribution and we draw the value 2.1, that's a realization of the random variable. If you're rolling a die, the value of the numbers on the face of the die that, that goes face up is the random variable. And the realization of the random variable is the particular number that shows face up when you roll the die. So if I roll a six-sided die and I get a two, I've realized the number two from my random variable. In that case, the distribution that the random variable is drawing from is what's called the uniform distribution because the chance of realizing every single value of the die is equal. So it's a uniform. So the distribution is uniform in that the chance is uniform between each one of the values. The realization is just the, ch the um, particular value you obtain. This is most commonly used in terms, so the realization is used for all things. The next one, support, is most commonly used for continuous variables, but still important conceptually. The support of a distribution is the set of all values that have a non-zero, that have a non-zero probability of being achieved, right? So the set of all possible values, set of all possible realizations, set of all possible values that a distribution can reach um, with non-zero probability is the support of the distribution. The normal distribution has support of the entire real line. You can actually, in theory, draw any number on the whole real line from negative infinity to infinity, even though the chance of drawing negative infinity is effectively zero. Um, any finite value has a finite probability of being drawn, even if it's very, very, very tiny. The support of a uniform corresponding to a roll of a die is one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the possible numbers you can, you can realize. You can, for instance, realize seven. It's not on this die, right? The support of a uniform um, discrete distribution is just a set of numbers in that discrete distribution. Anything outside of that is not in the support of that distribution. 
And that's actually it. Um, we can write these things formally, as we'll learn to do later in the, in the lecture. For instance, we might say that the probability, we might be interested in whether or not the random variable y has a realization less than little y. Here, little y is the value of the random variable, and capital Y is the random variable itself. So this probability tells, tells us we, we want to understand the probability that the random variable, um, when realized, produces a value less than y. We'll deal with these kind of probabilities um, later in this lecture as well, how to figure them out and so on. But that's really it. That's the concepts. Um, and again, the important part here is that we assume that anything that happens in a sense that we're not sure about, so for instance, if we're to understand how education affects turnout, these are another example, we don't think education, a certain level of education guarantees a certain level of turnout. We think it leads to more or less turnout as we increase education, usually more than most of the theories we have. So how do we deal with that? Well, in this case, turnout is a random variable that's affected by education. It's a conditional random variable. The distribution is a conditional distribution. The higher education is, the more we expect the distribution to what we would say shift over to the right, meaning you get more often, it's easier to draw larger numbers. It's more easily, it's easier to draw um, values of y that are closer to one. And this is really fuzzy right now because what's closer to one when you have a dichotomous variable um, you learn a lot more of this in your stats classes when you deal with probits and logits and latent variables and so on. That, that's all for later and not really part of this course. The point is the probability of drawing a one will be increasing in education, which means the distribution of the random variable corresponding to the probability of drawing a one will be shifting to the right to larger numbers. These are conditional probabilities. We'll talk about those too um, in this lecture. And we did a whole bunch of other stuff, if you recall, from the previous lecture about conditional probabilities and Bayes' rule and all that. Okay, um, but the, the core concept, again, is, one last time, is that the um, that variables that we understand are often random variables. Any realization, you could be the most educated person in the universe and just not vote at that particular time. Um, in that case, the realization of y is zero, even though you're very well educated. You're off on the tails, maybe, it's maybe unlikely that you didn't vote, but it's still certainly possible. And this probability of voting is a random variable. Okay. And again, most things we can deal with in political science are random variables. We might say um, going to war, right? We might think that we know in general what causes war, but we don't know for sure, and there are always things we're missing. And um, or maybe there's random events in the first place, so the chance of going to war can also be a random variable and so on and so forth, and we treat most of the things in political science as random variables that have some realizations that we will then have to examine statistically. Okay. That's it for this one. Um, in the next module, we'll talk about empirical distributions. Thank you very much.